Sumo is more than a sport. It's all about speed and technique and balance. It's about how explosive you are and how flexible you are. A really explosive type of wrestling. Two minutes at the most, you're done. You're going to see a lot of different athletes, a lot of different styles. You got to have that strategy, tactics, and technique. You got to have those three things to the extreme. When you go out there, you're going out to the battlefield. You can't back down, you can't be scared. You don't get a second chance. Anybody can beat anybody at any given day. I want to win this tournament. I'm happy to see the U.S. small pro. I want to see exciting matches. Good luck to everyone. Welcome to the largest international sumo competition in North American history. We're here at the 2014 U.S. Sumo Open in the beautiful Walter Pyramid on the campus of Long Beach State. I'm Tyler Tuioni, and I'm with Andrew Freund, producer of all 14 U.S. Sumo Opens. Thank you, Tyler. Well, you know, I remember back in the day, 10 years ago, you competed and did the best of any American heavyweight in the history of the U.S. Sumo Open, so congratulations. Thank you very much. It was quite a privilege, and uh, congratulations to you on winning national champion last year. Well, thanks a lot. This is going to be an incredible event. We have a full house here at the Pyramid, and we have about 60 athletes from all over the world from about 10 different countries competing here at the U.S. Sumo Open. Let's go right into four-time world champion Biamba. Biamba's amazing. He's competed for seven years in a row in this tournament. He won the gold medal all seven years with a collective record of 68 wins and only one loss. That's incredible. He's definitely one to watch. In your opinion today, who will be his biggest competitor? I'd have to say that Biamba from Mongolia is going to have a biggest challenge with Soslan from Russia. They're both former pro sumo wrestlers, and they were in the finals in last year's U.S. Sumo Open as well. So the big question, can Biamba continue this streak of winning eight gold medals, or will it be Soslan that upsets him, or maybe would be surprised from the field? We're going to find out soon. Besides the heavyweight division, who should we be looking out for in the other classes? Well, there's an incredible group of Mongolians uh, who have medaled year after year, so watch out for them in, in all the divisions. There's a Japanese competitor who competed for years in Japanese uh, university-level sumo in the lightweight division, so watch out for Hiroki. And we have Sebastian from Argentina, who's the five-time South American champion, as well as some great competitors from New Zealand, Tonga, Canada, and more. Let's welcome our special guest today for the U.S. Sumo Open all the way from Japan, Yama the heaviest Japanese human being in history. And Yama fought under the pro sumo fighting name, or Shikona, of Yamamoto Yama. Not only is he our special guest, but the head judge at the 14th annual U.S. Sumo Open. Before we begin, let's go over the basic rules of sumo. So they always are going to bow before they step into the ring. Now, these are the illegal moves. It is perfectly okay to slap, but you cannot punch. That is not boxing. All right, so again, slapping is okay. You can slap away at the neck there, but you cannot poke your opponent's eyes. It's fine to do a leg sweep. You can trip your opponent, just like in judo, but no kicking. You want to grab the mawashi, the belt, the sumo belt, anywhere around the waist, except you cannot grab the groin. Also illegal to grab the rear. But seriously, you do want to grab the mawashi and pull to get leverage over your opponent. However, you cannot pull the hair. So that wraps up the kinjite or forbidden techniques. Here are the kimarite, winning techniques. First of all, yorikiri, a frontal force out. Tsuridashi, which is a lift out technique. Looks like fun. There's actually about 82 different kimarite. We're showing you just a few here. Let's watch iwate nage, which is a outside belt throw. And finally, Yama steps in to show tsukidashi, Slapping technique, thrusting his opponent out. Let's get right into the action here. Our first matchup of the men's lightweight prelims is against Nyama and Andre Coleman. Uh, these gentlemen will be fighting to get into the quarterfinals later and eventually the finals. Uh, Nyama here is one of the top Mongolian wrestlers. Andre actually won the U.S. National uh, Sumo Championship this year, so it should be a good matchup. Again, in a bracket of four people, two of them will advance. So it's possible both of these guys could move on to the quarterfinals. They both weigh at about 187, so there's no uh, weight advantage here. All right, they both got a grip on the belt here. Nyama took away Andre's arm there by uh, lifting it up. Ooh, down he goes. Andre went off balance, and Nyama was able to grab him and put him down. Let's check out the replay here. You see um, Niyama has a grip on the belt with his right hand, 
His left hand is underhooking Andre there, controlling him a lot more, and he throws his opponent down. Let's move right into the next match. Our next match pits Zana from Mongolia against Jesse De Simone out of Nevada. Big weight difference here, Andrew. Zana at 187 and Jesse coming in at 155. Yeah, exactly. Jesse's one of the up-and-coming young American guys, but uh, he's going against an experienced competitor. Zana actually competed for the Mongolian national team at the World Championships. So let's look for a, a good, strong hit between these two competitors. What does Jesse have to do? Well, he wants to stay low. They both want to get under their opponent. Ooh, see, Zana got under him. Oh, Jesse's down, too. Jesse trying to grab a belt. He's nowhere close. Zana able to win with just a simple push out. Now let's take a look here. Um, Zana in the replay, you'll see, has his hands right under the armpits of Jesse. He's basically pushing him up and gets leverage that way. Look at that. Third match, we get to see Nyama again versus Will. Will Werner out of Connecticut. Now we saw Nyama's technique in the earlier match. Will is actually uh, one of the Americans who trained recently in Japan, and uh, we have high hopes for him in the future. He's uh, still a very young guy and is showing some good technique, but he has a, a quite a, a tough adversary in Nyama. Look at the footwork of Will. He's really learned a bit from being in Japan here. Let's see what he's able to do. So Will's trying to stay low here. Yama does quite a spin move there. Uh, interesting match. So far, Nyama's 2 0. Will has a good hit there. He actually moves Nyama back, but Nyama has this lateral movement. See that spin that diverts the opponent's energy. Very talented. Ness matched up. We get to see Zana again versus Ed. <laughs> Again, Zana has trained in Japan. Ed has as well, actually. So uh, Ed is one of the guys who trained with Will at Nihon University in Tokyo. Ed coming to us today from New Jersey. Again, let's look for the initial hit. Decent initial hit. Oh, too much weight forward for Ed. Yeah, again, the uh, reaction and the uh, movement of Zana uh, it was really excellent. He anticipated his opponent's movement and flipped him down. Off the fire off there, Zana gets down lower, and Ed tries to pull him down. He just stands up too high. <laughs> Next match, we have Jesse versus Derek. Derek Jeffries coming to us from Missouri. Now, uh, Jesse on the left, uh, being one of the lighter guys at 155 pounds, is a, a crowd favorite. Let's see how he does against the man who's about 30 pounds heavier. Real good get off there by Jesse. Trying to stay low and he's locked the left arm. He goes for a leg sweep. Derek's trying to grab the back of the belt. Jesse locked in solid. Still trying to turn to his right. We got a standstill here now, Andrew. Yeah, Jesse has a great position. Look at Jesse's head. He's basically keeping his opponent back by uh, getting his head in his chest there. Oh, <laughs> a nice move by Jesse. Nice, nice work footsie. by Jesse. Good extension. He traps him with his left foot and brings him down. Look at that smile. There we go. So Jesse, again, he, uh, he has one uh, good grip on the belt there, and his head is inside Derek's chest. And uh, he's able to get Derek off balance with that leg sweep, or sotogake. We've seen some great lightweight prelims so far. More lightweight sumo action still to come at the 14th Annual U.S. Sumo Open. You're watching the U.S. Sumo Open, brought to you by Sapporo Beer, proud U.S. Sumo Open sponsor for the past 12 years. Sapporo, legendary beer room.
Welcome back to the Walter Pyramid on the beautiful campus of Long Beach State. We're back at the 2014 U.S. Sumo Open. And the fans are enjoying the, uh, the Sapporo Pier Hakutsurasaki as well as the food from Shinsengumi. Whoa. Let's take a look at some basic sumo training. Yes. Here they're doing a shiko or the Ooh. leg lift. They normally do this hundreds of times every morning in Japan to build up flexibility yes. and balance. Now, Yama here is 600 pounds, but he is very flexible. He's doing matawadi, the full leg split. Not many 100 pounders can do this, and he's going down at 600 pounds. Yamba will show us Suryashi, sliding the feet, keeping low, and pushing her opponent out. That's the way of movement. And finally, Butsukari is like hitting practice, like hitting a sled in football. That they do usually at the end of practice in Japan. Let's get back to the action in the men's lightweight prelims. We have Derek Jeffries and Zana. Now, uh, so far, uh, Derek is 0 and 2, and Zana is 2 and 0. But anything can happen in sumo. So let's see what uh, Derek can do against his uh, thus far undefeated opponent, Zana. Decent get off. Zana goes right to the left side of the belt. Derek's trying to get some belt action, but Zana's got really good side to side movement, and there he pulls him forward. Derek being off balance. Yeah, again, you saw the, uh, the reflexes and technique of Zana. Look how uh, Zana takes the hand off. Zana keeps his right hand inside and just pulls Derek down as Derek is going forward. So a great example of technique by Zana. Straight into the next match, we have Oidov from Mongolia against Hiroki from Japan. Now, Oidov was last year's silver medalist, and Hiroki hasn't done sumo for a few years. He competed in college in Japan, but he's back. And he has a few fans, apparently, in the audience. They're both trying to get a lower position. Oh, wow. Again, great move by Oidov to spin Hiroki out. Oidov is going to 2 0, Hiroki at 1 1. That's going to guarantee Oidov a place in the quarterfinals. Now, Hiroki has his hand under Oidov's elbow. They're trying to keep him, but oh, Oidov takes him down. To the next match, we have Ed versus Jesse. Both these fighters 1 1. Actually, whichever one wins this match will qualify for the quarterfinals. So this is a huge match. They're both one and one. A two and one record will bring them to the quarters. Ed is about 30 pounds heavier than Jesse. They're both young guys who are up and coming in the U.S. in sumo. Just watch the get off. Jesse likes to fire off pretty hard. Nice fire off, but Ed stays lower and uses his momentum to be able to push the higher Jesse out. Yeah, very classic sumo movement there by both guys. They're both going hard. Ed has his head in the chest and uh, gives Jesse a very acrobatic tumble there. All right, we had 15 lightweight competitors. We're down to the top eight. Interesting to note, six of the eight are foreigners from Mongolia, Japan, and Argentina. The two Americans will have an uphill battle to get a medal here at the U.S. Sumo Open. When we come back, we'll have the men's lightweight quarterfinals. Who will be the next U.S. Sumo Open lightweight champion? Welcome back for the lightweight final rounds here at the U.S. Sumo Open. Let's move right in to the lightweight quarterfinals. We have Sebastian, the five-time South American sumo champion versus Andre Coleman out of Missouri. What does Andre Coleman have to do to beat Sebastian, a five-time South American champion? Well, both of these men have uh, other uh, judo experience, so you're gonna see, I think, some grappling. Sebastian dominated 3-0 in his bracket, and Andre's 2-1, and so they've both done well so far. Who can carry that momentum into a quarterfinal victory? Sebastian is a belt tactician, so 
normally I don't look for him to fire off. I look for him to get a good belt grip. Yeah, went for the belt. There we go. There's the judo. There's the throw. Both of these guys have judo, and you saw a judo style throw right there by Sebastian moving on to the semifinals. Looked like Andre led with his head and had too much weight forward, and Sebastian was able to grab the belt and give him a nice hip toss. The next match we have Avira versus Nyama, both from Mongolia, both at 187 pounds. Yeah, this will be interesting. So uh, Nyama here was 3-0, and Avra 2-1 and so far. The winner will face Sebastian. It looks like Mongolian wrestling, actually, not traditional sumo. They're pivoting, grabbing, fighting for position. How is Mongolian sumo different from Japanese sumo? So Mongolian wrestling involves uh, no dojo or ring. So you don't have to push the opponent out. You just want to get it down. You can see, oh, it looks like Avra's hand might have actually gone down early. I don't think the officials call that, but doesn't matter. Avra goes out, and Nama moves on. Into the next match, Zana versus Hiroki. This is Mongolia against Japan. That's right. Both of these men know real Japanese sumo. Hiroki competed for years when he was a student, and uh, Zana trained in Japan. Zana's undefeated so far. Hiroki with just one loss to reach the quarterfinals. Look for Zana to get a good takeoff here and stay low. And Hiroki will probably be trying to get a good belt grip. Oh, head to head. Yeah, they both want to stay lower. Nice push out by Zana. Hiroki kept trying to grab the belt and wasn't able to do it. Good handwork by both wrestlers. Head to head hit. That's what you're looking for in real sumo. They're both fighting for a position. You see Hiroki, like you said, does want to reach in and grab that belt. Zana's just trying to keep him off the belt and thrusts him out. And in the red in the background, there's Hiroki's fan club, disappointed with his quarterfinal elimination. Here we have Edward from New Jersey against Oidov from Mongolia. Now, Oidov was silver medalist last year. Ed is going to have a real challenge. Um, Oidov is looking to improve this year and get the gold. Let's see what Ed can do against him. Good takeoff by Ed. Ed staying low, and he's got Oidov. Oidov out of the ring. Nice, nice work by Ed out of New Jersey, taking out the Mongolian, who I'm sure was favored in this match. Yeah, that's quite an upset. You can see where Ed's training in Japan paid off. Watch Ed's feet. He's sliding them one by one, and his hands are under Oidov's armpits, forcing Oidov upward and backwards. Just a, a real dramatic improvement in Ed from last year to this year. A really nice upset for Ed, and I feel his training in Japan, like Andrew said, had a lot to do with his improvement. Let's ask the athletes what their recipe for success is. First of all, it's, uh, it's not about, everybody thinks it's about the weight and eat all day long. It's not about the weight. In Americans think about it like, oh, they eat a lot, lot of junk food or something like a like lot of oil or something. No, no, that's not true, you know. In Japan, we eat it like a lot of vegetables, a lot of meat, protein, you know. It's really healthy food. It's about how explosive you are and how flexible you are. If you have a like explosive start, you're gonna be successful in sumo. Every morning we, we do practice. It's like five to six, seven hours. Let's see how far their training takes them as we move into the men's lightweight semi-final action here against five-time South American sumo champion Sebastian and Yama from Mongolia. Now, Nyama coming in is 4-0, and so is Sebastian. Both of these guys are completely undefeated. Two of the favored wrestlers to win the medal, to win the gold medal, and here they're meeting in the semifinals. Sebastian from Argentina and Nyama from Mongolia. Look at that stare down. Both really good belt tacticians. It'll be interesting to see who gets their grip on the belt first and how they start to work it. Here we go. They're really psyched up. Who's going to make it to the finals? All four hands have to go down for the match to begin. Referee will give the signal. 
Good hit by Sebastian, but a pull down by Nyama. Wow, he got him on the neck and pulled him straight down. Is that because Sebastian had too much weight forward? You know, Sebastian, I don't think, had his feet under him. When you go forward with your head and your arms, you need to have that knee leading so you're not pulled down like that. See, Sebastian did go forward. There's his knee forward. But now his head is overextended. His legs are too far behind. He just gets pulled forward. Yeah, great reflexes again by Nyama. Really impressive. Let's go right into the second semifinal match with Zana from Mongolia against Ed from New Jersey. Ed with a surprising win earlier against a heavily favored Mongolian. We'll see if it can happen here again. Yeah, the winner of this match will face Nyama in the finals. The loser will actually still have a chance at third place going against Sebastian. Good get off from both fighters. To the edge. Oh, it looked like Ed had Zana. Zana used the edge of the ring and was able to spin it around. Yeah, both guys have a great touch here your initial hit. They both went head to head. Ed got him going, but Zana has, again, great sumo techniques. See, Ed is moving forward. He's very powerful. Zana just brushes him to the side and uses Ed's momentum to sweep him down there. Beautiful move by Zana. Well, the crowd is uh, getting ready for the third place match coming up in a moment just before the finals. Here we go. We have uh, an Argentinian and an American in the third place match. Now Ed's had some upsets here today against uh, heavily favored Mongolians. He's going up against the five-time South American champion. How do you think he will do? Well, most people would favor Sebastian because he's been competing in sumo for over a decade and he's been at the World Championships many times. But Ed has shown that anything can happen. He's the lone American left competing for the bronze medal. This will be exciting. The winner of this match gets third place. Why the pause before they go down, Andrew? What's the benefit of that? They're trying to adjust the timing here to get the best possible start, and it looks like we're about to go. Here they go. Ed goes forward. Looks like he goes almost full. Ed pushes out the South American champion. Ed from New Jersey. That's an upset, Andrew. Oh, this is amazing. It's very rare that an American even gets a medal. And for Ed, who's only been competing for barely over a year, to get the bronze medal in a field of 15 people is really stunning. Amazing job by Ed. This is quite a crowd pleaser. People are thrilled to see an American get to the podium. I wanted to do a little bit better. I messed up my hand in my second match. Uh, try to come back next year and improve upon it. But uh, I mean, given what it is, I feel pretty good. It was all right. What a difference training in Japan made for Ed. Now we're getting ready to go into the men's lightweight final match between Nyama and Zana. That's right, Tyler. Nyama and Zana are both undefeated 5-0. They haven't lost a single match. And the interesting thing is they flew here together from Mongolia on the same plane. They're very good friends. They're training partners. They've practiced together countless times. So to win this match, it's really a matter of concentration. They know exactly what techniques their opponent has. Um, this is going to be interesting to watch. Both 187 pounds, Nyama 32, Zana 24. Maybe experience, maybe youth. We'll have to see. Here we go. Nyama in the white belt and Zana in the black belt. Good touch, Yai. Zana comes out low. Nyama trying to grab the belt. This is where he's dangerous. Zana trying to hold his own. Both looking. Nyama with a nice hip toss out of the ring, and we have ourselves a lightweight champion. Congratulations, Yama. Good sportsmanship. What a match. Oh, that was amazing. That's everything you could ask for in a final match. There's the Mongolian fans cheering on both men for a really, really dramatic piece of action there. Nyama is just soaking it in. Now, watch this here. Nyama in the white, he's taller, and he actually got both hands on the belt. Zana only had one hand on, which allowed Nyama to pivot and throw his friend right off the stage. That'll be an interesting flight home, huh? So, she took the hundred and a half of the Galpharn was this very tourism day, I'm sure it's I'm very, very feeling great, and I'm coming here in the US first time. 
and I'm very, I'm very feeling very, very good. It's, it's great action. Well, congratulations to our lightweight champion, Yama. Stay tuned for middleweight action when we come back. Get ready for some big action at the U.S. Sumo Open. There's Biamba, four-time world champion. And there's his opponent, two-year-old Toa Tuyoni. Biamba playing with the kids, he's great. He does this all the time, doesn't he? Yeah, I know, Biamba's popular everywhere he goes. Oh, and there's Mace. There's Mace. We've already seen some exciting lightweight action. We've crowned a lightweight champion, and now we're moving right into the men's middleweight prelims. My name is uh, James Brewster Thompson. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm 61 years old now. I I've maybe stayed in a little too long, but it's been fun. I mean, just recently I took second in the nationals for sumo. Uh, the body is still staying in pretty good shape, and I still love what I'm doing. I have the Guinness Book of World Record as being the strongest jump roper in the world. I jump rope with three people hanging on me up to 450 pounds. There's no tomorrow for me and there's no yesterday. It's just right now in this moment. And that's what I try to stay focused when I'm out there, stay in the moment. And I think the great ones can stay in the moment better than the next guy. That's where I'm at right now, you know. The party is on. Did he see jump rope with three people on? Yeah, James has uh, some amazing Guinness World Records. Uh, his athletic ability is incredible. But he's going against Tyler, not you, Tyler Tione, but Tyler Olson. Tyler from Idaho. If I could jump rope just by myself, I'd be doing that quick. Yeah, there you go. Who has the advantage here? Well, Tyler's pretty pumped up, as you can see, but James, even though he's 29 years older. Oh, James tried to swim him. Yeah. He tried to use Tyler's momentum and get behind him, and as a result, jumped backwards and got off balance and went out. It's, uh... Yeah, James really wanted that belt. He's a judo guy, former national judo champion, and uh, he didn't get the belt. Tyler wins. Let's move right into the next middleweight preliminary match between Ruslan from Russia and Cameron from California. I started with uh, wrestling in the elementary school from in Russia. It's a Greco-Roman wrestling. And, uh, like everybody heard about sumo, it's Japanese traditional wrestling. And uh, I was always wanted to try how it works for me and and I like it so far. Yeah. Interesting wrestling background for both of these guys. So Ruslan from Russia has many years of wrestling and uh, he's new to sumo, but Cameron here is also relatively new to sumo. He's actually our local guy at Long Beach State on the wrestling team. So both of these guys are grapplers. They're gonna look to lock up and wrestle. Here we go. Off the tachia. They don't really have a tachia there. They just kind of stood up. So that's not real sumo, but they're obviously both accomplished wrestlers. Trying looking, to looking for that belt grip. Both trying to use the other person's balance and momentum against them. This is this is really a wrestling match. Cameron was going for the leg there. Ruslan's just kind of feeling. Uh, Cameron's trying to go forward. Ruslan trying to out muscle him now. Pushes him over the edge. Cameron with a nice block. Pushes Ruslan. Spins around and down goes Cameron. Nice move by Ruslan. At one point, I thought Cameron had him. All the way to the edge of the ring. Yeah, that was really a, a, a very close match. Both men with a lot of agility. You see, they don't start off with a hard hit, which you want to do in sumo. Yes, sir. But once they lock up, Cameron trying to stretch him out. Ooh. Ruslan had him almost at the edge. Cameron is trying an outside leg trip. Doesn't quite work as Ruslan flips him around. Wow. Nice victory to Ruslan. Let's move right into the next match. David Lipman versus James Thompson. 61 years old, that is incredible. Yeah, Dave, uh, David is only 26, so uh, James has 35 years on him. But, uh, you know, James is in great shape. Let's see what he can do against the much younger man here. the touchy eye or the start. See, James got two hands under. Look at that. David has an outside grip, not very effective. James wins. 
61-year-old beats a 26-year-old. Staying low, using weight and balance. Nice victory for James. He grabs the belt there. Yeah, you can see his knees are bent. Great leg work there by James. He stays low and forces his opponent back. More middleweight prelim action when we come back. You are watching the top USM Mobile on Universal Sports Network. Welcome back to the 2014 U.S. Sumo Open. We've got a capacity crowd here at the Walter Pyramid. We've seen some exciting sumo action, and we're continuing the men's middleweight prelims. And right now we have Bill Gay from Mongolia against Tyler from Idaho. Yeah, this guy, Bill Gay, is unbelievable. He's won so many U.S. Sumo Opens. Uh, he's lighter than all the other middleweights at only 203 pounds. He has won multiple lightweight titles and multiple middleweight titles. So even though he's smaller than all the other middleweights, look for Bill Gay's incredible belt work and grappling abilities. There's Tyler getting pumped up as usual. Wow. That's quite a beginning. Well, he's getting in the mood. Let's watch the start here. Bill Gay's probably just going to try to catch him. Oh, and he Ooh, does. Touch the eye to the face. Tyler moving forward. Bill Gay hasn't grabbed the belt yet. He's working the top body. Yeah, Bill Gay already has Tyler off balance with two arms inside. Oh, down Tyler belt now. Finishes him off. Nice win by Bill Gay. Yeah, you know, basically Bill Gay was just trying to stop that charge, which he did very effectively. And uh, goes on to get his actually second win now. He did pretty good against Tyler at 227, but we'll see how he does against the heavier middle ones. The next match is Robert Daniel against Cameron Shepard. Now, we saw Cameron earlier. He's the Long Beach State student. Robert out of Tennessee. Yeah, Robert's 1-0 so far. Cameron is 0-1. Robert has uh, won medals many times on the national level. And even though uh, Cameron is new to sumo, he's bringing some amazing energy here. 22 years old versus 44-year-old Robert. Let's see what happens. Good touch. The eye for Robert comes off firing, but uh, Cameron able to hold his own. They're sort of locked up in the middle here. Robert's got a grip on the belt. They're both jockeying for position. Oh, another leg work move by Cameron. Wow. Nice trap by Cameron. Wow. Cameron takes down the veteran. Look at that guy. And he's the local student at Long Beach State. The crowd is loving it. That's fantastic. It looks like Robert might have a good grip here at the edge and be able to spin him. But then Cameron traps his leg and is able to push him down. Nice work. Next match, we have the 61-year-old James Thompson. And he's facing Bill Gay. Yeah, so far, Bill Gay is 2-0. James is 1-1. One one. If James can win this, he has a chance at the quarterfinals. We'd have a tiebreak match. So far, Bill Gay has been undefeated. Both of these guys like to go for the belt. This is a 100-year-old match. 39-year-old Bill Gay versus 61-year-old James. Both of these guys like to lock up. They like to grab the belt. Weight differential of 43 pounds that James outweighs Bill Gibbon. There's the catch yet, very slow. Um, James has a grip on the right side of the belt. Yeah, Bill Gay does too. Bill Gay, they both have both hands on the belt now. It's really a matter of balance and uh, sudden movements here. I'm looking for Bill Gay. Oh, there it goes. Oh, nice hip toss. That was a nice move by Bill Gay against a much larger opponent. Yeah, that's a classic Bill Gay move. I mean, he's dominated how many people over the years. It's been amazing to watch him in action. You see, they're, they're locked up about evenly. Bill Gay's going to shift a little to one side here and then take his opponent's momentum. He moves and just heaves him. Full capacity crowd here. And that looks like JC from NSYNC. I can neither confirm nor deny, but we're moving right into the men's middleweight quarterfinals with Bill Gay from Mongolia and the Long Beach State student Cameron Shepard. Now, Bill Gay is 3-0 so far, and Cameron, who's very new to sumo, is two wins and one loss. Incredible that he's made it this far. Both these guys are on the smaller side of middleweight. Bill Gay at 203 pounds. Cameron at 218 pounds. So the two smallest middleweights are into the quarterfinals. Now, because Bill Gay has so much experience, and there isn't 
a very large weight discrepancy, then you have to give the match here, or at least the advantage to Bill Gay. Well, I would give the advantage to Bill Gay against any middleweight competitor just because he's so skillful and so fast. But, you know, Cameron's done some amazing matches and moves earlier today to get his two wins, so um, anything can actually happen. But you can see Bill Gay is very, very focused here. He wants to go all the way. Anything can happen in sumo. We're ready for the touchy no, eye. No. Really? Come on! Already? <laughs> See, neither of them really went forward. They just stood there. They went for the belt. Now, in, in real Japanese sumo, you're going to do a hard hit. These guys didn't hit. They just grabbed the belt. They both don't want to take any chances. They want to keep a tight grip. It looks like Cameron has a little too much weight forward here. I know he has a, a one leg forward to provide some balance, but. He seems overextended. Yeah, they're both feeling their opponent right now. They're not really uh, exerting all their strength. They're just feeling. Oh. Bill Gay did the same move he did against James. This amazing twist, pivot, and throw his opponent out of the ring. Wow, that's classic Bill Gay. But that happens because the opponent's weight is forward, doesn't it? That's right. You can see Cameron exerting a little pressure. Bill Gay twists him and flips him out. That was a nice win for Bill Gay. Bill Gay goes on to 4-0. Moving on to the next match, we have Tyler Olsen against Ruslan from Russia. Now, uh, these two guys, as you can see, Tyler and Ruslan, Tyler's 2-1, Ruslan 3-0. Uh, just to be sure, Tyler is on the left, Ruslan on the right. These guys have the same color, Mawashi. They're about the same weight and... Uh, Haircut too. Tyler has a very interesting way of starting his matches. Watch for the top chair. The hit from Tyler. Ruslan just takes it, gets the belt right away. The winner will face Bill Gay in the semifinals. This is big. Tyler doesn't have a grip on the belt at all until now when he spun around. Nice move by Ruslan. He had control of that match from the very beginning. Well, that's Ruslan now going on to the semifinals where he's going to face a tough opponent in Bill Gay. Yeah, you know, Ruslan pivots and takes Tyler's momentum, lifts him in the air, places him down. We have a big match here with journeyman Kenna Heffernan, 3-0 from Hawaii against Ike out of Georgia. Yeah, Kenna here just cruised through the earlier rounds. Ike is new to sumo, but he still managed to be 2-1. Kenna on the left has won the gold medal multiple times at the U.S. Sumo Open, at least three times before. He and Bill Gay are the two guys who are multi-time winners. Let's see if Kenna can continue on to the semifinals or if Ike will stage an upset. Watch out for Kenna's touch guy, his initial hit. Very fast. Oh, he fired oh. right off there. That's an early start, Full isn't start. it? Yeah, let's see that again if we can here. Um, it looks like the referee hasn't given the command. Kenna started moving before the referee's signal. So in international rules, the referee has to give the verbal command, look at the ref's hands and mouth to indicate the start of the match. There's a touch, Ike kind of fires off. Oh, he caught Ike again. Yeah, you know, Ike is a national champion in other wrestling, but he's not used to the touch yet, the initial hit. So once he learns that, he may have some great potential in sumo. You see, Kenna, he's got two steps ahead before Ike realizes. Yeah. Kenna caught him right in the neck, right in the chest. Once you start backpedaling like Ike did, it's, it's normally all over. Into the ring at this time, we have Miguel and Ted. Miguel from California. And Ted making his way to us from Canada. Yeah, Ted is actually interesting. He competed once before at the U.S. Sumo Open in a very, very strong international field. He got to the semifinals, and then he couldn't get a medal. So let's see if Ted can redeem himself and get a medal this time. If he wins this, he will face Kenna. Ooh, good touch, eye for both of them. There we go. Front push forward by Ted. It looked at like at one point Miguel was trying to pull Ted down and he Ted was able to get his balance and stop himself from going forward. Yeah, Ted was very smooth and stable there. You see he gets his arms under. He doesn't stop moving. He's going forward, forward, forward. Great positioning by Ted. He's going to face Kenna in the semifinals. 
So we move on to the semifinals, men's middleweights. We've got Bill Gay, the light middleweight, versus Ruslan from Russia. We've got Kenna from Hawaii, and we've got Ted from Canada. Is this what you expected at the beginning of this tournament? Well, Bill Gay and Kenna are shoe ins They're so experienced, and Ted has done well before. Ruslan is the wild card. Any way you look at it, this is a very powerful group. Both Kenna and Bill Gay have won multiple U.S. Sumo Opens. Are they on a collision course for the middleweight finals? More when we return. <laughs> the U.S. Sumo Open continues here on Universal Sports Network. Up next, the men's semifinals. The pressure is building to see who will be crowned the next middleweight champion. I mean, this is tournament, you know. Everybody has, I think everybody has, like, pressure. For me, of course, I have a little bit of pressure and a lot of different guys, you know. I hope it's not going to be pressure on me. It's going to be pressure on my opponent, and I hope I'm going to make the championship. There's always going to be butterflies. I mean, that comes with the territory. There's going to be quite a bit of, of pressure, um, but um, I, you know that comes with it. You know, whether you're chasing for it or people are chasing you, that's part of the event. You train a whole year round just to be able to, to wrestle five seconds. The pressure is on. The middleweights semifinals: Bill Gay versus Ruslan. The winner gets to go to the championship. That's right, Tyler, and uh, Ruslan here is quite a surprise. 4-0, undefeated so far, just like Bill Gay. Ruslan is in his first sumo competition. Bill Gay is a veteran. Now, again, look at the concentration in Bill Gay's eyes. Ruslan's pretty psyched himself. Neither one of these fighters has a very quick touchy eye, so they will both probably very methodically go after each other's belts. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. They ba basically want to lock their opponent up and use their reflexes and balance. Look at the breathing here. Ruslan's really getting pumped. But take a look at Bill Gate, too. When you see his eyes, he is very, very focused. That first split second, the first few seconds are critical. Looks like this is it. Ooh. Now, Andrew, I got to say, what, what was that? So Bill Gay wasn't totally concentrated, I think, so he wants to kind of reset and uh, start again. Here we go. This is it. This has got to be it now. Very slow, Tachi. Eye. They both go right to the belts. They have the same position, left hand outside, right hand inside. <laughs> again, too much weight forward. That was, that looked too easy. Well, I think Bill Gay actually grabbed a knee. Let's watch this in a second, but... Uh, Ruslan lost. He still has a chance for third place. Vilge moves on to the finals. So I'm looking at Vilge's hand. Yep, his right hand. He tripped up Ruslan by just taking a little bit of the momentum and knocking him off That's balance. That's an amazing move. I don't think I've ever seen that. We'll move on to the next match. This is Kenna Heffernan versus Ted Matsumoto. Kenna from the 808 area code. Ted from Canada. What should we expect here? Well, Kenna has competed many, many times at the U.S. Sumo Open. He's always won medals. In fact, he has three gold medals. And uh, so far, he's undefeated 4-0. Ted is a very good wrestler and grappler and has done well in sumo. But so far, he's 3-1. and one. He's going to have to really pull off an upset to beat the Hawaiian Kenna. You can really see the concentration in Kenna's face. Both these men are dying to meet Bill Gay in the finals. Good touch eye for Kenna, right into the face of Ted and then pulls him down. That was very fast. Yeah, Kenna had planned that. He knew what he wanted to do, and he executed it perfectly. Yeah, that is uh, really uh, amazing. Kenna hits Ted here right in the neck, gets him leaning forward to recover, and then he pulls him straight down from the yeah. back of the neck. A lot of power. Yeah, there's not many people who can withstand a direct hit from Kenna. So moving right along, we'll move into the men's third place match between Ruslan and Ted. Ruslan from Russia and Ted from Canada. That's right, and I think we mentioned that Ted has competed in the U.S. Swim Open before, made it to the semifinals, but ended up in fourth place. So this is a chance for Ted to redeem himself, but Ruslan is looking very, very tough so far. 
with a four and one record. Ted with three and two. It's very different, I think, because all of the athletes have similarities, but also have different ways of doing things. Kenna fires off. Ruslan will be very patient. Yeah, definitely you can see the wrestling background in Ruslan's matches. Uh, Ted also has some uh, wrestling and judo experience as well as rugby. So let's look for their initial hit here. See, Ted goes forward, but Ruslan just tries to brace himself and lock him up. Um, ooh, Ted's going for the leg. Again. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> This is amazing. Ruslan in his first tournament gets a bronze medal. That's very impressive. Um, it looked like Ted was going for the same move that Bill Gay used. Uh, he tried it once, he tried it twice, he tried it again, and he was overextended. Yeah, Ted didn't have his legs under him, a little bit unbalanced here, and uh, definitely Ruslan knew how to take advantage of it. You know, it's got to be terribly disappointing and frustrating for Ted getting fourth place again. But really, uh, congratulations for his effort. Well, this sets the stage for the middleweight championship. The final match between Bill Gay, 203 pounds from Mongolia, and Kenna, 252 from Hawaii. Yeah, this is amazing. Both Bill Gay and Kenna have competed many, many times at the U.S. Sumo Open. In fact, they've competed at some of the same U.S. Sumo Opens, but Bill Gay often won the lightweight. And so in all of these years, Bill Gay and Kenna have never had a match against each other. This is an historic moment. First time ever, Bill Gay, multi-time U.S. Sumo Open champion, and Kenna, multi-time U.S. Sumo Open champion, are facing off in the final match for the gold medal in the middleweight division. Remember the styles. Kenna likes to fire off on his tachi eye. Bill Gay likes to remain patient and go for the belt. This should be interesting to see exactly how this comes off. Yeah, that first second is probably going to decide the match. If Kenna can get Bill Gay moving backwards, it's over. If, if Bill Gay can grab somewhere, Bill Gay has a very good chance. Here we go. The moment of truth. This is for the gold medal. There's a touchy eye. Kenna goes forward. His arm got locked. Bill Gay moved behind him. And he's got Kenna. He's got Kenna down. That was strange. That was amazing. No, Bill Gay planned that. Bill Gay definitely did not want to hit Kenna straight on. He stepped to the side. The timing of Bill Gay was impeccable. Watch this. Bill Gay's feet move. His arms go forward at the exact moment when Kenna is overextended. Once Bill Gay has him from behind, Kenna has nowhere to run. Wow, what a stunning victory for Bill Gay. Undefeated, 6-0. Because I'm a lightest in the middleweight, because my weight is the 200 pounds, the other guy's 250. So I have to be, you know, the trick all of them, you know, because I can just, you know, push him each other, you know, I can do that because they are stronger than me. So I have to, you know, circle and uh, trick them, you know. Uh, my friends, you know, they are you know, cheering up me, you know. That's good. I inspire me. Don't go anywhere. Heavyweight sumo. Coming up next. Welcome back. The crowd is pumped for heavyweight matches to begin at the U.S. Sumo Open. Yeah, this is my first time in sumo. I think Biamba is going to win. That's who I'm going for right here. Mongolia. Mace is taking Biamba from Mongolia. We're about to start the men's heavyweight prelims at the U.S. Sumo Open here at the Walter Pyramid at Long Beach State. And here he comes, Mace's guy, Biamba, in the first heavyweight match of the evening. My name is Bian Bajo Lumbayer. I'm originally from Mongolia. You're watching strategy, technique, tactics, everything all fall up into one guy. This is a tough person to, to beat. In 2001, in Grand, grand Champions, like, he, he visited Mongolia and then he scouted from kids and then he picked me. So, when I was 16, I moved in Japan and started doing sumo. 
I've been in America for eight years, you know, and then when I get here, I just start wrestling in the U.S. so often. Here we go, Roy Sims versus Biamba from Mongolia. Roy from right here in California. Andrew, what are we looking for? Well, uh, Biamba's so skillful, and um, I don't know anyone's going to be able to beat him, but I think Roy uh, has a football background, some other martial arts. So let's see what Roy does right off the start. That's an unknown element right there. Nice touchy eye from both fighters. Yamba runs right through Roy and takes him down. It was just uh, it was just a big hit off the initial start. Well, yeah, Roy had a good hit, but Yamba got his right arm under Roy's underarm and kind of leveraged that position to spill his opponent to the ground. See here, Yamba got his left hand on the belt. His right arm is underneath, and he has an underarm throw or a squeenage to the field. Just really good technique for Biamba. We'll move into the second match, which is Brody Henderson from Canada against Justin Kreit. And for Justin and John, it's a family affair. My brother Justin, Justin Kreit. My brother John, my older brother John. He's great, man. He's two minutes older than me. I never live it down. He always calls me every year on our birthday and wishes me a happy birthday two minutes after midnight. We fight all the time and we play football together. We've been doing that since out of high school. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, you're twins, so you guys gotta wrestle each other. They always wanna see the competition between the twins because it's almost as if you're literally watching two of the same person do the same thing. I mean, we're pretty identical. We're exact same height, almost the same weight. I think I'm a pound lighter than him this year. We can go to each other during the tournament and say, hey, I noticed you're doing this, I noticed you're doing that. If you try this, because we kind of know how each other plays and how we wrestle. Yeah, I kind of can coach him and tell him how he can beat somebody or how somebody could be beat, and we just kind of compare notes. He's closer than any of my other siblings, you know, and it's just because we're twins, you know. After I win a match, the first person I get to see is my brother, and that's, that, that's pretty cool. All right, let's see how Justin and John do today. Brody just 19 from Canada to make the trip. Justin and John, the Kite brothers, coming down from Washington State. 6'7", 317 pounds is Brody Henderson. And Brody's uh, only 19, but he's actually been coming down for several years to compete in the U.S. Sumo Open, getting better little by little every year. Let's check out this uh, match in the early rounds here of the men's heavyweight. <laughs> nice get off for both athletes. Brody goes right to the belt. Uses his weight and pushes Justin outside the ring. Yeah, Brody uh, got inside Justin. Even though he's taller, Brody bent, got his head, his shoulder inside Justin's torso, and that was really the deciding factor. Brody has a good wide stance now. That's something he's improved over the past year. See his footwork? He's keeping his legs wide. No escape for Justin. We'll go right here into the next match. Kelly Knighty and Batar from Mongolia. This is a lifelong thing for me. Some athletes may come and go. I'm here forever. I have a Guinness World Record for being the heaviest person to complete a marathon. I've ran three marathons. Just two weeks ago, I swam the double width of the Bear Lake. It took me 16 hours and 13 minutes. My goal is to swim the English Channel. Sumo wrestlers are athletes. I haven't added motivation to be here at the US Open this year because my daughter will be competing. Serena's 2.30 and works out all the time and is very, very healthy. And if she had the desire to excel in this sport, she has all the tools to do that. I think he's honest about what I need to do, but he's not as hard on me because I'm his only girl, his only daughter, I guess. So he's always treated me kind of fragilely. I'll have competed in 13 uh, US Opens. I've won a ton of medals. They've all been silver or bronze. And it would be really nice to take home that gold. Well, talk about silver and bronze. That last photo showed Kelly here and his opponent, Batar, who respectively got the silver and bronze a couple years back at the USM Open. Both of these guys are very strong and experienced. And then we'll see if Kelly can finish his quest to get a gold here. And like we mentioned, Batar is no pushover. He did get the bronze medal at the USM Open. He's a regular training partner of uh, four-time world champion Biamba. Um, Kelly and Batar have competed against each other many times over the years. This will be a tough matchup for both of them. 
Good touchy eye. Kelly comes off. Big shots from both fighters. Oh, my oh, goodness. Wow. They went down at about the same time. I think Batar's hand hit first. We're going to have to watch this again, but a very tough call for the referee here. They both executed throws at the same time. Now it goes to Kelly. Nice. 433 pounds. He's very well for a big man. Yeah, here it is. Uh, Kelly's doing an outside arm throw. Batar's trying to get him down from inside. Ooh, yep. Batar's right hand. Excellent. So Kelly opens up with his first victory, but still a ways to go to make it to the final rounds. We've had exciting sumo action all day, and now we're in the heavies. More heavyweight prelims when we come back. Welcome back to the 14th annual U.S. Sumo Open. It's heavyweight action time. In our next match, we're bringing to the mat Brody Henderson from Canada and the former professional sumo athlete So Slan from Russia. This will be an interesting matchup with the two tallest athletes, Brody at 6'7 and So Slan at 6'5. Uh, my name is So Slan. Uh, I'm from the south part of Russia. I started wrestling freestyle in Ossetia, and uh, after I moved to Olympic team to Moscow, the people who interest the sumo, they came all the time, search the big guys. When I was 15 years old, I was like 300 pounds and six foot two, and they just invited me like for two weeks in Tokyo, like to see the Disney, to enjoy, to go on a practice a couple of times. They promised me big future, and so, uh, come back to Russia and uh, like doing like basic sport without any money and I take the big contract. I want to win this uh, tournament to show the kids who you know who want to compete who are really big kids like I was and you know they, they sometimes can make the any another sport but they can also enjoy the sumo and be the successful that's my main goal. We've had some really good stories from a lot of these athletes. And right now, it's Brody from Canada versus Soslan from Russia. And Soslan, I would think, should hold the advantage here. Yeah, both men are 1 0 so far, but Soslan is much more experienced as a former professional. Here we go. <laughs> nice touch, Yai. Soslan goes right into the belt. Brody has his belt as well. Yeah, they're both kind of just juggling around here. Soslan definitely has the edge because of his technical expertise here. Um, he's trying some different moves. Brody's recovering well. Brody's moving Soslan back. Yeah, Soslan's going to move side to side here. Either left or right. There he goes. Brody got a little high. Nice toss by Soslan. Brody got a little bit high, and his weight shifted in the wrong direction. Yeah, so slow there, he was waiting for his opponent to move at him, and he twisted him, uh, pulled his momentum, did a throw, and, and barely won here. Another thing is when you see him go down, Soslan does put his right hand down at around the same time as Brody, but unlike the previous match with Kelly and Batar, Soslan is clearly on top. So the referee called it for Soslan. Moving into the next match, we have Batar facing John Kreit. Justin's brother, who we just saw a few matches before. That's right. Well, we saw both of these men earlier. So far, they're both 0-2, so they're not going to make it to the quarterfinals, but this is a match for pride. Who can get one win in this division? Batar from Mongolia or John Kreit? Ready for the hard hit here? Nice touch, Yai. Batar is a good belt position. Both hands on the belt. Ooh. Oh, Kreit goes off the ring. Oh, is he okay? Look at that. Yeah, Kreit's hurt. He took a hard bounce there. Batar, great position. Bouncing off the stage goes John. Ooh. That's a It looks looking, like, like his back of his head bounced off the, uh, the mat there. Looks like his shoulder hit first. I think he's going to be okay. Thanks to our medic, George, there, and everyone for helping. John out. Never like to see the athletes get hurt, so it's good that he's up and walking. Our next match here, we have Kelly Knighting. He'll be facing off against Jay Holder. This is going to be a great match. You know, both Kelly and Jay up to this point are 2-0. Two, oh. two wins, no losses. They both are guaranteed a place in the quarterfinals. This is still a very important match, though, because the winner will be seated higher and will face the second-place guy in the next bracket. So this is a, a key matchup. 
Kelly is the five-time U.S. heavyweight champion, and Jay just got his first heavyweight champion title this year. So this is kind of the veteran versus the newer guy. Kelly at age 44, Jay at only 31. Both athletes, 2-0. Both guys are well over 400 pounds. Wow, what a touchy eye. Both fighters going at it. Kelly grabbing the belt now. Jay right there trying to reach inside. They both came off fired up. Yeah, Kelly has a much better position here. He has both hands on the belt, very tight. Ooh. To the edge of the ring. Kelly, bends Kelly his needs knees. to drop his hips and push forward. And Jay steps out. He got it, yep. 433 pound Kelly versus 412 pound Jay. What a match. Big win for Kelly. You see Kelly here, how's Jay going backwards? Jay's trying to resist, he's on the edge of the ring. Kelly bends his knees, leans forward. Jay has nowhere to go but down. Let's look at the quarterfinal matchups for the heavyweights. Well, let's see, we have uh, Biamba and Jay, Kelly and Roy, Soslan and Big Joe, Dava and Brody. Interesting, we have a couple Americans, three Americans in there, as well as a Tongan, Canadian, Russian, and a couple Mongolians. What a, a nice mix of sumo talent here in the men's heavyweight quarterfinals. Coming up next, will we see a rematch of last year's heavyweight final match between So Slan and Biamba? Can Biamba win the heavyweight gold medal for the eighth year in a row, or will someone take him down? Welcome back to quarterfinal action in the men's heavyweight. You're looking at four-time world champion Biamba from Mongolia and his toughest competitor from Russia, Soslan. We compete the, like every tournament. We probably going to the final. I think I'm gonna win this time. We've been fighting each other like a couple times. You know, he's a good wrestler. <laughs> Me and Biamba, we uh, already know each other from Japan. We travel all the time together. <laughs> he knows already everything about you, and you know everything about him. <laughs> I hope I'm gonna win this time because uh, I work hard a lot and Bamba just right now, he just have a hundred pound more than I have. That's why he always, you know, have a more uh, uh, explosive start and more heavy start. I'm gonna push him out. <laughs> <laughs> Men's heavyweight quarterfinal action between four-time world champion Bamba and U.S. strongman competitor Jay Holder. Well, Biamba has a tough uh, quarterfinal match here to open up the quarterfinals. Jay uh, has a big weight and good strength advantage against Biamba. Look for a really, really fast attack from Biamba to uh, topple his heavier opponent. Jay is currently the uh, U.S. heavyweight champion. But Biamba definitely has more experience and, and skill. Check out the start. What a start. Biamba got underneath Jay and basically just power slammed him into the side of the mat. What you just saw is real sumo. That is what you want to see in sumo. A very quick start, a one, two, three second blast, knock your opponent out. And this is truly what you would see in Japan for authentic sumo, which is why Biamba is a former professional sumo wrestler and a four time world champion. Wow, that had to hurt. Up next into the ring is Kelly Knighty and Roy Sims. Kelly at 3-0 and, oh and Roy at 2-1 and one is only lost to Biamba, and this should be a good one. Oh, yeah, Kelly's definitely the favorite. He's 3-0 and oh here, and Roy's relatively new to sumo, but Roy has been amazing. He defeated his other opponents, as you mentioned, losing only to Biamba. Kelly weighs in at 433 pounds, Roy at 374. You're going to see 807 pounds smashing in the center. This is it. Nice touch, Yai. 
Oh, oh, Roy got him. Yeah, Kelly did not follow through with his legs there. He overextended. He did not bend his knees. He didn't move his feet. Yeah, you'd expect a little. Oh, Roy looks like he's bleeding. I think he got hit at the very start by Kelly. Let's watch here. Both fires came Ooh, off strong. I think that first hit. Yep, there's a little blood right there. There it is. That was the hit. Yeah. So here Kelly does not move his feet. Yeah, his legs say stay, stay still. And he just leaned forward. Amazing by Roy. He's going to go to the semifinals. Let's go, Big Joe! Well, here's a match we have. Sol Slan versus Russia. And Big Joe, as they call him, from Tonga. Yeah, so Soslan from Russia, Big Joe from Tonga. Both of these guys have uh, competed several times at the U.S. Open. They've both won medals before, but definitely uh, Soslan with his pro background is the favorite to move on to the semifinals. Watch for the speed of Soslan coming off. Coming off the line here. There we go. This is a pretty good get off. Joe has his belt now, trying to pick him up. It looked like he was trying to trap his foot. But Sosan's very well balanced. Yeah, look how fast Sosan moves. He has him under control here. Sosan just waiting for the right time. Oh, there it is. Nice. Nicely done by Sosan. Uh, I think Big Joe is clowning around here. I don't think he's knocked out. He's just messing with us. <laughs> a little bit silly, but uh, that's Big Joe for you. Oh, and there's Sosan for you. You know Joe's turning victory. Well, at least they're having fun. Yeah, um, Sosan is a pretty stable grip here. He just waits for the right moment and throws Big Joe down. Who's going to face Sosan in the semifinals? You know, right here in the matchup, we have Daba from Mongolia versus Brody from Canada. Daba at 3-0 and zero and Brody at 2-1. and one. You know, Dava actually comes from a judo background. He went from Mongolia to Japan and trained in judo. So I don't expect a hard hit from Dava. He was dominant in his earlier rounds, won all three matches. But uh, he basically would get the belt and do a judo throw every time. Brody is going to try to do a hard hit. Let's see if Dava can stop the hit. Here we go. Decent get off by both fighters. Brody trying to get the belt. Dava's already on the inside. Dava puts him down. Yeah, nice job by Dava. He went right to the belt, got Brody off balance, and was able to finish it. Yeah, Dava basically took away one of Brody's arms there with the underarm grip. You can see the left arm, actually both arms of Dava's get under Brody, and Brody tries to resist right here. Dava just pulls him back the other way and takes Brody to the ground. Dava goes on to the semifinals against Sosa. We're moving right into the men's heavyweight semifinals with Biamba and Roy Sims. Biamba 4-0, four four-time world champion. Roy Sims 3-1, his only loss to Biamba earlier. Yeah, Roy has been incredible, 3-1. And, and because of the way the brackets are structured, he beat his higher-ranked opponent, Kelly, and moved on to face Biamba again here. Roy has a very, very, very tough matchup, fighting Biamba twice in one day with an injury to his head as well. Oh, Roy tries to swim Biamba. Oh, Biamba my goodness. gathered himself, gathers the belt, turns him, throws him. Nice work by Biamba. Roy, I thought for a second, might have had something there. Oh, you can see the reaction from Mason family there. Check it out. <laughs> Roy's a tough guy. You know, he was lacerated by Kelly Knighting in an earlier match. Went and got taped up and continued to fight and uh, had to fight a very tough Biamba. Yeah, look how hard Roy comes out. He dodges Biamba. He keeps thrusting. He knows he has to keep Biamba off the belt. He does not want to lock up with Biamba. He keeps pushing and pushing. If Roy had a wider stance, he could have beat Biamba here, but his footwork is too narrow, and Biamba just twists him over and wins. We're going to take a break, but you've seen some exciting sumo action so far. Come back with us. We have the semifinals and the championship match in the men's heavyweight division. Welcome back to Long Beach, California for the 14th annual U.S. Sumo Open. There's a shot of Roy getting taped up again. The wound opened up again against Biombo in that last fight. It was up, opened up earlier by Kelly Knighting. Semi-final matchup here. 
between Soslan from Russia and Daba from Mongolia. A good chance we see a uh, rematch of last year's heavyweight final. Yeah, if Soslan can win here, he and Biombo will match up again in the finals. Oh, whoa. Ooh, that's a false start. Yeah, right? Dava took his hands off the ground before the referee gave the signal. Look for all four hands to go down to start this match. Soslan from Russia for pro similar experience. Dava with some judo yeah. So Song goes right to the belt. Dava has his grip on the belt as well. Oh! Oh my goodness. Wow, we are not going to see a final match between Biamba and So Slan. What happened there? Wow. Look at the foot. I saw Dava put out his foot and trip So Slan as he tugged his belt. All right, So Slan gets a grip. Dava does too. They're locked up evenly here. You're going to see Dava pull to the side and trip at the same time. Watch the reflexes and the speed here by Dava. It's coming up in just a moment. There it is. Look, there it was. It was Dava's right knee. Just that, enough. Yeah, wow, that was amazing. Oh my goodness, Soslan is gonna be in the third place match, not the finals. Oh, we have the third place match here between two really tough competitors, Roy Sims and Soslan. Yeah, this is really something, folks. Roy is amazing. He's the only American to make it to the semifinals. He's in the third place match against Soslan, who was expected to go all the way. And Roy, the underdog, is going against Soslan, who is just struggling to hang on to the bronze medal. Nice touchy eye. Roy goes forward, pushes Soslan into the Hakutsurasaki barrel. Wow, nobody expected this. Soslan does not even medal. Roy comes out of nowhere, a completely unknown element. He had to fight Biamba twice. He just beat Soslan. He faced the two former pros, and he gets the bronze medal. This is unbelievable for Roy Sims. Here he is. He goes off so hard from the start, catches Soslan by surprise. Soslan was just too slow and tentative off the start line. My, my brother passed away two weeks ago, and, and, uh, and th this was for him. His name was Callan. Great, great kid, and, and I loved him very much, so I wanted to win something for him. Wow, a very meaningful moment for Roy in his debut sumo competition. This brings us to the final matchup in the heavyweight division. The four-time world champion, Biamba. Can he continue his streak of eight years in a row gold, or will Dava, his counterpart from Mongolia, knock him off? This is going to be incredible. Both these guys are five wins, no losses. They've shown no sign of weakness. Nobody has been able to beat either of them. But we've got to favor Biamba. He's bigger. He has the experience. But he's got to be nervous. Seven years in a row has been a miracle. If he can continue with this win, he'll have eight years in a row. Unprecedented. There's a Tatsuya. Biamba goes right at Dava, picking him up. Oh, uh, wait a second. Biamba is actually toying with it. When Biamba does that, he should have finished the match. He's got, he's got the belt. He picked him up already. Yeah, he should have finished that match in two seconds. He's he picked to... him up again. He's walking him to the side. He slams him down to the side of the ring. Biamba, eight years in a row, gold. Yeah, you know what? Biamba was trying to show both that. He could have won that match in two seconds. He wanted to make it dramatic for the crowd. And there's the reaction. There's the payoff. People love the throw. Yabra is a consummate showman there. Call it what you want. That's victory. That's eight years in a row gold, Andrew. That is amazing. Yet yeah, no one has ever won more than two years in a row. For Yabra to win eight years, it is beautiful. This guy is an incredible athlete. Look at this. He's just doing this for the drama here. Lifts him up and sweeps him to the ground. This is historic. Eight years in a row for Yabra. So happy right now. It's all about my training, you know. And uh, I have a lot of people for supporting me, you know. For thank you for everything. Yeah. Still to come, the open weight division at the U.S. Sumo Open, where all sizes go head to head. Can Biamba win yet another gold medal today? The U.S. Open spring about about 15 years ago, 14 years ago. This is the 14th annual event, and it's, uh, you know, it's huge. This sumo tournament, the U.S. Opens, is the biggest tournament in this part of the hemisphere, you know, as far as Canada, South America, the United States. This is the biggest on this side of the planet. 
It's the biggest tournament outside of Japan. It's like US Open and tennis, and same thing for sumo wrestlers. It's a huge tournament for us. A lot of the best come out here. I mean, we have former world champions. We have you know, current world champions. We have a lot of people come out here. Every year, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Before the open weight finale, let's check out some of the highlights from the women's competition. Here in the lightweight, Janelle Hamilton was dominant, going 4-0, knocking over all of her opponents. She's the multi-time U.S. lightweight champion and openweight champion. You can see she's getting low in each match. She's pushing the opponent straight back. Look how fast she goes out here. Another easy victory for Janelle. And here we have Janelle facing off against Celine. And if Janelle wins this one, it'll take her undefeated through the division. Yep, so far Janelle's 3-0. and She wins this, it'll be 4-0. and Again, Janelle not, not only dominates the lightweight competition, but she has been and is the current U.S. Openweight champion. She's very focused. Yeah, look for a very fast, very low start attacking here with her head. There, he, there it is. Nice touch there. She goes right forward and takes out her opponent, Celine. Another nice victory for Janelle. Yeah, you can see every one of Janelle's matches, she almost always wins by just knocking her opponent straight back with speed, power, and great balance there. It's been a rough year. I lost two fights in nationals where I was being nice. I put my hand down or did something that was um, at edge for my competitor. And so I just have to go in with a stronger attitude, um, remaining focused and get through them and get to the other side of the doyo. Congratulations to Janelle Hamilton for going undefeated in the women's lightweight division. Let's check out some highlights from the women's middleweight division. That's right, just like in the women's lightweight where Janelle was unbeatable, Geneva Weber, all the way from New Zealand, blasted through her opponents. Here she is against R.A. Williams from New Mexico. Geneva gets really balanced. And she tweaks her opponent at the end there, throws her straight down. And let's check out this match coming up between Geneva and Tiffany. Now, Tiffany is many time U.S. middleweight champion. She's competed at the world level as well. Geneva has also competed all over the world at the world championships, too. But uh, this is a pretty good matchup. Both of them have international experience in the middleweight division. They're locking up on the belt here. They're trying to get low. Geneva, even though she's taller, is getting really low. Look at Geneva's head inside of Tiffany. And there's the leg sweep from Geneva. She actually went 4-0 undefeated in the middleweight division for the gold medal in the middleweight. Again, you see how uh, Geneva's head is inside, and she takes her leg and trips Tiffany from behind there. Um, it was unexpected. I didn't know what to... I seen her training and I was like, I don't know if she'd come straight at me or what I was thinking, but yeah, I don't know. Lucky, I guess. Congratulations again to Geneva Weber for finishing undefeated in the women's middleweight division and taking the gold. Now we'll move right over to the heavyweights. Women's heavyweights Natalie Burns facing off against Kelly's daughter, Serena Knighting. Well, Serena's just getting into sumo. We've got a favor Natalie here. This is actually their uh, final match together. Natalie's competed multiple times at the world level. Serena just competed at the uh, Junior World Championships where she did get a medal. Yeah, there's a good uh, little belt grab by Natalie. Serena's out of position. Natalie has her under control and pushes her straight out. Good effort by the 16-year-old Serena Knighton, but no match for Natalie and her strength and experience. Congratulations to Natalie Burns for winning the women's heavyweight gold medal. You gotta uh, not square up with her, grab her by the belt and try to push her out as hard as you can. I think I achieved that. All right, and before we see the women's open weight final match, let's check out the bronze medal match between Tiffany, the U.S. national middleweight champion, and Janelle, the U.S. national lightweight champion, who also just won gold at the U.S. Sumo Open today. Good hit, very fast. These ladies are both very quick off the start. Janelle falls on top of Tiffany. Victory goes to Janelle. She gets the bronze medal in the open weight division. This brings us to the women's open weight final match for the gold between heavyweight Natalie Burns 
and middleweight Geneva Weber. Both Natalie and Geneva were undefeated in their respective divisions. Geneva 4-0 to win the middleweight. Natalie 2-0 to win the heavyweight. One of them will remain undefeated to take the open weight gold medal. Natalie from Idaho versus Geneva all the way from New Zealand. Geneva's given up about 40 pounds to Natalie, but Geneva has competed all over the world for New Zealand. All right. Ooh, there's the belt grab from Geneva. She has Natalie under control now. Ooh, takes her down. Three-second match. Great technique from Geneva. She goes totally undefeated today. 4-0 in the middleweight, 3-0 in the openweight. Seven wins, no losses for Geneva. Look at that, two hands on the belt. Natalie has no grip on Geneva's belt. Easy win for Geneva. And Geneva had a very successful trip all the way from New Zealand with two gold medals that she's taken home. Great effort. This brings us to the men's open weight division in just a moment. But first, Mr. Shigata, owner of Shinsengumi Restaurant, is presenting the Fighting Spirit Award to Jesse DeSimone for his incredible energy and effort here at the US Sumo Open. At 155 pounds, he did not win a medal, but he demonstrated the true sumo spirit. We're in the men's open weight preliminary rounds with Tyler Olsen against Biamba. Well, Tyler here has no fear. He doesn't care if he's gonna hit against the world champion, Biamba. Pumped up and ready to go. It's a hard hit. Tyler is not giving up. He's going forward. Biamba grabs his belt, breaks the grip, yeah. flips Tyler down for the victory. Easy victory for Biamba. Andre Coleman versus James Thompson, 61 years of age. Andre at 187 pounds, James at 246, about 60 pound weight advantage for James, although he's uh, about 25 years older than Andre. And James takes away the arm there. Andre cannot use that arm. Wow, James gets the win. That was a nice win for James Thompson, proving that he still has it at 61 years of age. This next matchup, Brody Henderson, 19 against Jesse DeSimone from Nevada, 28. Jesse, 155 pounds to Brody's 317. But Jesse hits him hard, that's why he won the Fighting Spirit Award. Brody gets him though and lets him down gently. A lot of times that's just the way it goes when you're that big, fighting somebody that small. This next match, Roy Sims versus Soslon. There's some bad blood here from the finals, the semifinals match earlier in the heavyweight division. Here's a replay of the semifinals. Now, Soslan was taken down by Roy. Soslan does not want to lose again. Twice in one day, here he is bowing in defeat earlier today. Can Roy beat the former pro Soslan twice in a row? Ooh. The touchy eye, Soslan with a hard smack to the side of Roy's face. Roy leans forward and goes down, and that's the end of that one. This will take us into the men's open weight quarterfinals with four-time world champion Biamba taking on the young Canadian Brody Henderson. The former pro from Russia, Soslan, taking on American powerlifter Jay Holder. Kenna Heffernan from Hawaii taking on five-time South American champion Sebastian and five-time U.S. champion Kelly Knighting taking on today's heavyweight silver medalist Dava. All right, the first quarterfinal match, Biamba from Mongolia versus Brody from Canada. Do they have a history of meeting each other in prior yeah, U.S. Opens? It, yeah, Biamba's uh, beat him several times before. Um, if Biamba can win this in the next couple matches, he will repeat as the openweight champion as well as the heavyweight champion. Um, Brody's getting better every year, but I think he still has a ways to go to match up against Biamba with five years of it, Japanese pro sumo experience. All right, here's the start. Solid tachi eye for both fighters. Biamba takes Brody to the edge of the ring. Uh, Biamba, you know what? He's looking to load up like he did earlier. He's looking to lift Brody. He's trying to please the crowd here. Check it out. Both fighters have a nice, solid grip on the Mawashi. Yep, Biamba's trying that throw. Brody is hanging on, though, to his credit. Look Biamba's at that. Biamba's got Brody going down. Brody oh. pushes Biamba. 
out of the ring. Look at Diamba. He's like, what? That's the biggest upset of the day. Yeah, Diamba was being foolish, playing around. He did not do his sumo. Brody took advantage. He's in shock right now. That must be thrilling. See, Biamba got a good hit. 19 years old. Yeah, you know, Biamba could have probably taken it in the next couple seconds here, but he waited. He played around. Brody, to his credit, stayed very balanced. He didn't go down, and he just lifted and pushed the other way against Biamba. What an upset there. Wow. Right off the bat in the open weight, we have a huge upset. Biamba's kicking himself. He should not play around. He should really concentrate. But all goes to Brody as he moves on to the semifinals in the open weight division. Well, big congratulations to Brody. That's got to make the kid feel good. He's all smiles down there on the side of the ring. But that brings us into the next open weight quarterfinal match between Soslan from Russia and Jay Holder. Yeah, again, Soslan has had an off day today. He has not been himself. He's lost matches he should have won. And uh, he really, really has to win this. Now, Biamba's been eliminated from the open weight division in the quarterfinals. Soslan's the big hope to keep going to the semis. The winner will face Brody. Oh, my goodness. Tachiai. Wow. <laughs> Another upset. Jay Holder defeating Soslan. Yes, yeah, Soslan is backing up. He should not be doing that. He should be going forward. Jay goes straight ahead, gets the win. This brings us to Kenna Heffernan from Hawaii versus Sebastian from Argentina. Yeah, Sebastian's the only lightweight left in the competition, 184 pounds against Kenna at 252. You never know, even a smaller guy can take down a bigger opponent with the right technique, but Kenna is aiming for gold. He got silver in the middleweight. How far can he go in the openweight competition? Hawaii versus Argentina. Kenna wants to do a hard hit. Sebastian wants to get that belt. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Sebastian tried to trip, a leg sweep. That rarely works, but when it does, it is spectacular. Kenna sized him up, kept his eyes on his opponent, and pushed him straight out. So who will face Kenna in the other semifinal match? We have Kelly Knighting against Daba from Mongolia. Now, Dava already got a silver medal in the heavyweight. Can he make it to the semifinals in the open weight as well? Kelly, five-time U.S. sumo champion. Kelly's pretty pumped up because he did not medal in the heavyweight. This is his last chance for a medal against the very crafty Dava. Oh, Dava's doing it. There it goes. Hands down. Ooh, good push by Kelly. Kelly. Goes straight forward, pushes Dava to the edge. Dava stepped out. That's right. Dava's right foot went out before Kelly fell down. So Kelly with a big win here, advancing in the open weight. That's amazing. Kelly will face Kenna in the open weight semifinals. Oh, but wait a second here. The, uh, the officials, the judges are calling for a conference. If the match is in question, they will have a meeting in the ring with three possible outcomes. One possibility is to uphold the referee's decision. Another possibility is to overturn it. And the third possibility is a rematch. But look here, Dava's foot clearly went out before Kelly fell. Look at Dava's right foot steps out, and then Kelly falls. Here's the conference. This is exactly why Sumo has the sideline judges, to be able to catch things that the referee might miss. Absolutely. Um, let's see if they uh, made the right call here. The referee indicated Kelly is the winner. After the conference, the winner is still Kelly. Kelly moves on to the semifinals. Only four men remain in the open weight division. The semifinals are coming up next. Thank you to Sapporo Beer, main sponsor of the U.S. Sumo Open for 12 years. And now for the grand finale at the 2014 U.S. Sumo Open. This takes us right into the first match of the semifinals between the young Canadian Brody Henderson and Jay Holder. This has been an incredible saga. Both these men beat pros, Biamba and Soslan, to get here. Nice touch, yard. Wow, it's well, Brody right gets underneath. Edge. Oh my goodness. Brody's gonna get Jay. Jay recovers. He's got Brody. Jay's gonna throw Brody. Brody throws. 
throws Jay down. Wow. 19 years old, this, going to the championship. This is incredible. No one saw this coming. Brody has beat Yamba and Jay to get here. So far, with this win, Brody is four wins, no losses in the men's openweight division. Wow. This brings us to the Hawaiian, Kenna Heffernan, against Kelly Knighting. Kenna at 252 pounds against 433-pound Kelly, five-time U.S. champion. The winner will face Brody for the openweight gold medal. Who's it going to be going to the finals? Ooh. Good touch, Yai. Kenna comes off, and he's lower than Kelly. Kelly, Kelly trying to pull it down. Oh. Kenna knocks Kelly out of the ring and takes the victory. Great aggressiveness. Kenna did not give up. He kept pushing and pushing. He's going to the finals, and he's a middleweight. He took down all the big guys. This is going to be an opportunity for Kenna to get the gold that he didn't get in the middleweight rounds. That's right. Kenna is very aggressive, very persistent. He does not give up. It's time for the third place match, though. Still a chance for a medal for both Jay and Kelly. And check it out. These guys fought in the early rounds of the men's heavyweight. Jay at 412 pounds. Kelly at 433 pounds. Here it is. Kelly sidesteps him, which took away Jay's powerful attack. Kelly gets his hands under. And he eventually gets Jay moving backward. This is what happened earlier today where Kelly beat Jay in the heavyweight division. You see Kelly has a good position underneath, forces Jay out. Are we going to see a repeat of this match with a victory for Kelly, or will Jay come back and find a way to win against the veteran five-time U.S. champion Kelly? Here he is, Jay, the challenger. Who will get the medal? Neither one has gotten a medal in the heavyweight division. They're both hungry for that bronze medal in the men's open weight. Kelly tied, tried to sideswipe Jay in the last fight. I don't think he's going to do that. I think they're both going to come out full speed, and we should see some serious fireworks here. Yep, they're both 3-1 and one so far in the open weight. Who's going to get the bronze medal? Wow, nice blow by both fighters. Jay's underneath Kelly, and this time Jay takes the victory. Redemption for Jay Holder winning a bronze medal in the men's open weight division. Wow, that was big. Well, Kelly dreamed of getting a medal today. It didn't quite work out, but Jay gets a medal in his first U.S. Sumo Open. Look at the key. He got under Kelly. He got Kelly backpedaling and off balance. That will do the trick right there. And now, folks, the final match of the entire tournament. The open weight championship between Brody Henderson and Kenna Heffernan. Kenna, silver medalist in the middleweight division, and Brody, who has taken out two monsters today in Biamba and Jay Holder. Kenna is 252 pounds, Brody 317 pounds. Now, Brody here is just incredible, taking down bigger, more experienced opponents. Kenna has been the U.S. champion about 15 times over the years. He has so much experience. He's quite a veteran. Can Kenna get the gold medal that he missed in the middleweight, or will Brody stage another incredible upset? Canada versus USA. This is it, folks, the last match of the evening. This would be a huge upset if Brody could defeat Kenna. And it will be very satisfying for Kenna if he can finally get that gold that he's been looking for all day long. Intense concentration here. They're focusing. They both want this. Look at the first one second. How are they going to hit? This is it. Oh, oh, the ref calls a false start. Kenna was going straight on. He hit Brody, but the ref had not signaled the start yet. They're going to have to reset. You know, actually, Brody knows what's coming. He just felt that hit, so Brody can anticipate what Ken is about to do. Is Ken going to do the same hard hit, or is he going to change it up? Let's check out the start. Here it is, the last few seconds of the competition at the U.S. Sumo Open. Ooh, for the goal! Brody! Ken gets low. 
Kenna went to the side that time with the stuff, but Brody caught it. Brody has a Mawashi and pushes Kenna out of the ring. Another upset for the 19-year-old. Are you kidding me? This is just amazing. No one saw Brody even getting a medal. He took the gold medal in the open weight, beating Biamba, the world champion, in the process. Kenna settles for his second silver medal of the day. But here's the man of the hour, Brody Henderson from Canada. Gold medal in the U.S. Sumo Open. Look at him. You can't even believe it. That's amazing. See, Kenna dodged to the side here, actually. He didn't hit him straight on. Brody caught him. See, Brody's arm is under Kenna. He locked up on Kenna. Brody's footwork is the key here. Watch Brody's feet. He slides them steadily one by one. Kenna cannot dodge left or right because Brody has a wider stance, staying low. There's no escape from that movement right there, leading Brody to the gold medal. Uh, I can't describe the feeling. It's, it's amazing. I'm, ec I'm ecstatic. Uh, I was hoping for maybe getting fourth or something like that because uh, I didn't. Biombo was out of the question, and uh, when I took him, just eyes opened up, and I thought if I can get lucky with him, just keep pushing, and maybe something will happen. So I ended up coming on top, which is absolutely incredible. So this is great. It's a wrap for the 2014 U.S. Sumo Open. We had so many exciting moments today. That's right, Tyler. We have seen everything. This upset victory, shocking from Brody. We saw the disappointment of Soslan without getting any medals. Two silver medals for Kenna. Bill Gate, dominant in the middleweight, 6-0. And of course, eight years in a row, gold medal in the heavyweight goes to Biamba, the four-time world sumo champion. We've seen it all. I'm Tyler Tuyoni for Andrew Freud saying thank you for watching the 14th annual U.S. Sumo Open. See you next year.